welcome to Louisiana Heartbeats. I'm Sue Landry, and again today we have a special author that's with me. She is, has written a genre that I'm not familiar with. It's also history, facts, and I would love to introduce you to Mickey Pfeffer. Welcome to our show. Thank, Thank you. you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I tell you what, Acadiana, it's really a lot of fun sometimes before we start a show, and I'm so glad that Mickey was here and we were having a few little difficulties that run sometimes normal. But Mickey and I got to talk about different things and she has so much to share that I want to be sure that I do not disgrace her by saying the name of your book properly. What is the name of the book that we're going to talk about today? It's Southern Ladies and Suffragists, Do You Are How and Women's Rights at the New Orleans World's Fair. Now, you're not just an author. You've had other careers and I'd love for you to share with the Acadiana viewing audience right now some of the things that you've done and where you've come from before you were inspired to write this book. So, I'm from New Orleans and for years I was a fashion illustrator in department stores in the advertising department drawing the ads that appeared in the newspaper. Okay. And then I was a traveling sales rep for women's business fashions. And in both of those careers, I, it was about women's presentation of self and attempting to get ahead in the business world. And so it's a natural outgrowth of those two careers that uh, is the subject of this book, women attempting to um, find work, advance in work, and make a name for themselves. Okay, yeah. Mickey. Mm -hmm. Now, in those wonderful, outstanding careers that yes. you have uh, started off with before, prior to actually writing this book, how long were you doing that? And about what year did you finish before you became an author? Okay. <laughs> Are you still doing it? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I was a fashion illustrator for 18 years, wow. and I was a, a sales rep for 25 years. And when I retired, I thought, what would I like to do? <laughs> I would like to go back to school. So I went back and earned a master's in English. English had been my uh, bachelor's degree and, and one in fine arts. And, and when I was finished the master's degree, and this subject was the subject of my thesis, I thought, I would like to continue in history because I I got more and more interested in, in history. So UNO had an urban studies um, PhD. Okay. And so I went and got a PhD in urban studies, urban history track. So according to this, <laughs> that's why that evolved. Right. So that book is uh, about what? Who you started off? Who did you use as your research? Well, I, um, I was taking a history seminar okay. where, where we could only use primary resources. And the title of the class was Gender and the City. Oh, so okay. I was looking for a gender issue. I was in Tulane archives uh, looking in someone else's paper, a man. And um, the archivist came along and said, what are you doing? what are you looking at? And I told him, and I said, but I, I really want a women's issue. And he said, well, that man was the director general of the Cotton Centennial Exposition, and Julia Warren Howe was head of the women's department, and we have her report and catalog. So he went off and got it and put it in my hand, and that was it. The report and catalog listed every item that was in the women's department, state by state. It, it listed every book that was in the literary section of the women's department. And it had a personal testimony from many of the, uh, the lady commissioners from various states on their experience at the World's Fair. And Julia Ward Howe was the, pre as president, wrote her personal remarks, and in them, she complained about the way she was treated by the ladies of the press in New Orleans. Okay. And I thought, hmm, 
there is drama here. <laughs> Let me look into this. So I tried to find out who the women were, who she was talking about. It, it so happened it was the Daily Picayune, which is now the Times Picayune. Uh, a woman owned the Daily Picayune in, from 1876 to 1896. Wow. That's not well known. No. And she not only made it a family newspaper <laughs> and expanded its circulation, she nurtured journalists, female journalists, and paid them wages. They worked regularly at the newspaper. And her, her star reporter was Catherine Cole, and she covered the women's department uh, day by day. Okay. And all of Julia Ward Howe's activities. Julia Ward Howe was a Bostonian suffragist, activist, reformer, abolitionist. And she had celebrity because she had written the verses to the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Wow. That's mainly what her celebrity rested on. And so when the politicians and businessmen put this World's Fair together, they wanted to project a, an international um, face to the world, and they chose celebrities to lead the various departments so they could pull people to the fair. Uh, local women were incensed that the men passed them over, but, Julia Ward Howe had a national reputation, and no, none of the women who were leaders in New Orleans had that national reputation. Okay, let's just back up a little bit okay. and share uh -huh. New Orleans. Yes. Okay, that is the most important thing because this is history making. It was made. How ironic that today's topic is still kind of talking about, just so happened, some of these same areas. Not only that, but, it's, but the same phrase, equal pay for equal work, was one of the rights that the women were pushing for in 1884 and 1885. And we're now 2017. Yes. Wow. Well, I love what it was said right here about her. said uh, this mainly, observation of women's struggle for power and acknowledgement in the workplace. Right. Which is the topic on the news these days. Right, exactly. You know, and so uh, this, this book has got a lot of facts in it that uh, women would be interested in reading it. Like I shared with you before the show, I should have gone out and got the book because then I'd had a whole lot more information to share. But then at this particular point, if anybody's interested in finding out what this book is about and all those things that you put into this book, then they can always shoot you an email and ask you some questions. Sure. So backing up, so here's this book, mm -hmm. which is what? It's got what kind of facts in it? Everything that she did? How many different people do you talk about, about in this book? <clears throat> well, I focus mainly on Julia Ward Howe and a core of activist women in New Orleans, including the two women at the Daily Picayune, and, and each of the other newspapers in town had assigned a woman also to cover the exhibits. Most of those co that coverage was just what was there and who was showing, but the, the other two women got into why the women's department existed, so that women at the time who needed to help support their families could look at the exhibits and imagine, could I do that? Is that a role I could take? And if I do want to be a typewriter, a typist we would call them now, what do I need, what training do I need to get there? That was what the department was to show. And also, how women could contribute to industry, because those World's Fairs were about the Industrial Revolution and what what was being available in the marketplace. And I think that the politicians and businessmen were giving a nod to the women to try to bring women into New Orleans, but 
what the women were trying to prove was that they could contribute to industry so they were very proud that there were a lot of inventions shown in the department a washing machine an ironing board a pie wow cutter the hook and I a summer cottage the woman's department was on the second floor of the balcony the gallery of the government and states building where on the ground floor all the states and the federal departments were shown Nikki why did you write this book I wrote it because these women's stories weren't told yet awesome and and hardly anything was written about this particular World's Fair which was a big event at the time but later World's Fairs like the one in Chicago in 1893 and the one in St. Louis that's the subject of Meet Me in St. Louis in 1904 overshadowed the, the New Orleans okay. one and the only other time it was it was covered in any way and not the women's department so much was in 1984 when the World's Fair again was in New Orleans and okay well you know a lot of us first of all when did you start writing the book when was it actually published mm -hmm. and how did it get nominated to be the winner which people do not a lot of us do not know about this Endora Welty Prize. Yes. Yeah. Eudora Welty was a Mississippi writer. And okay. She went to, uh, she was connected with the um, Uni Mississippi University for Women. That's right. And there, it is that university that awards the Eudora Welty Prize. So I. Uh, so you it published this book about when and how it many? It was published in 2014. And, okay. And I began the research in t 2004. So 10 years from the time I began. It was, it's been a fascinating I guess. ride. To, uh, I first read the report and catalog, then I went to all the newspapers. I read all the newspapers of the time, and you learn all kinds of interesting tidbits. You had said something earlier, and I'm laughing. I don't want to misquote you. Yes. But something about uh, what kind of women are just readers. What did you say earlier? Somebody said something and you said oh I said uh, historians are people who like to read other people's mail <laughs> so you are <laughs> like a historian to read other people's mail so yes I do like to read other people's mail so I went to Boston and read a lot of Judy Ward Howe's letters her great 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 granddaughter sent me transcripts of 44 years wow. of her journals so I had that um, Wow, you I, were just, I the door out. open and you read. Absolutely. <laughs> it was absolutely fascinating. Automatically, I'm thinking you were one of these, as it was written on the back of your promotional card. Spirited women meet and sometimes clash over exhibits, jobs, education in old New Orleans. I could just see you right there among them all. <laughs> Probably, you know, getting what you could and, and stating. So, this is the project you had. Yes. Is this the only book that you wrote on this topic? Yes. At this time? Yes, but uh, out of this grows my current project, yes. which is to transcribe the letters of Grace King, who was a New Orleans uh, fiction writer and historian in the late 19th century and early 20th century. Uh, so I'm transcribing those letters currently. How does one go about transcribing? First, you get the material, and then well, you know, it's a project that you made your mind up you were going to do. Right, right. And you put the word out there, and now it's just coming to you? Oh, not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go, go out and get it. <laughs> the, the letters are held at, at LSU. There you go. So I have spent some time in the archives there, and then I've been able to uh, scan a lot of the letters. And then you spend time trying to figure out the handwriting of 19th century oh. people mm. not only their handwriting to their family and you know you're not making careful letters to your family they know your handwriting 
Also, in the 19th century, I'm going to give this back to you, uh, okay. people would write like this, and then they turn the page and write like this over the page. So you have, you have a, it's wow. a challenge. Yes, I, in fact, challenge. as you're saying that, um, okay, my grandmother wrote a story, mm -hmm. and that's exactly her notes. You start reading like this, and all of a sudden you're going right. around the page, and you're right. on you know, the back of the page. So. Right. She must they have got that from have, her, her mother. So. Well, they didn't have the amount of paper we had True. to just waste paper. They now, we had briefly talked, like I said, prior to getting uh, everything set up, and you mentioned that you're going to be going and speaking somewhere, I think, this weekend. Where right, are you going? I'm, I'm going to the Louisiana Historical Association annual meeting to talk about one year of... Uh, Grace King's transformational year, 1887, when she goes to Hartford, Connecticut, and meets Mark Twain and other literary figures. Uh, so, while so if people are interested in you speaking, then they can shoot you an email and find out oh, exactly sure. where yes. you're willing to go. Sure. So uh, you do a we're, presentation we're or two something? Or three again. There we are. Yay! <laughs> I, I speak to a lot of women's groups because they're interested in. This is the first wave of suffragists who came south. Southern women had not been um, that uh, um, taken with the suffragist movement in part because it grew out of abolitionist movement. And they were torn between their allegiance to their region and their gender. So, uh, Susan B. Anthony was one of the people who came to New Orleans during this fair. Oh, yeah. And was very well received. So, so there were small inroads made for suffragism, which is getting the vote for women, gaining the ballot, which wasn't accomplished until 1920, but women were pushing for it. Then. Wow. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I, back to speaking to groups, I, I go, I'm happy to go wherever people want to want to And your that. whole topic is, is around these women that a lot of people don't know right. or have not read about these different facts of what really took place. Um, I like what's said here that you are an independent researcher. Now what does this visiting scholar at Nichols State University mean? It's, uh, it's a, a pretty loose arrangement with Nichols uh, State where where I am available to the university okay. if they need me, and I have access to the databases and the library. So it's a win-win situation. So you've come a long ways from being in the two other areas that you were in, and now you are a published author, you are a historian, and you still seem to be full of energy, going all over. I know. And you enjoy what you're doing. I love What a wonderful love, life you I have. I love my life. It's a great life. <laughs> well, for people that are watching uh, the, the, the show today, if they're interested in um, history, what would be the first thing you would tell them how to go about a topic, whatever topic? How would a person go about, if they want to write about something, what's the first thing they have to do? Would you give them? advice? Well, um, I would guess the, the whatever your natural inclination was. I mean, I've been a feminist for a long time, so it wasn't a great leap for me to, to research these women. So if, you're, if your passion is sports or science, you know, start there. And the newspapers of a period or a, a particular figure, uh, a, a sports figure, a, a woman, to, so, to follow, to just start anywhere. Start. Yeah, start. Just start. You can always <laughs> edit it later. Right. You're not going to believe this, but we only have four minutes in the really? show. Really? After all that, jumping through all those hoops and having a good time, <laughs> our, our time is almost up. Oh. So. Have we not covered anything that you would like to cover at this particular point? Like your next speaking uh, date is going to be when? 
it Friday of this week, and okay. then on the 29th, I speak at Destrehan Plantation, no, at uh, the St. Charles Library okay. in Destrehan on the same year, 1887, of Grace King's Letters. Okay. So those are the, the nearest dates. And um, if So, we know that you're going to be working on your, the current project. Right. Have you got an idea of how long this is going to take you to finish? <laughs> Since the other one? Hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of, years? of okay. letters. I, it will probably be my life's work, but <laughs> if if I get, get going on them, then I know the next project I'd like to do. It's, it's one of the New Orleans women who was the only avowed suffragist. Okay, in, and uh, her name is Caroline, Caroline Merrick. Merrick. Yeah. Okay, well, I tell you what, we've covered a lot of information, and I know you have a whole lot more. And you brought up the word feminist. Yes. Which I wanted to ask you if yes. you were. Uh, a lot of people don't know what that is. A lot of people don't know what it's like. Is it just speaking up what you believe and that's it? Well, I think it's taking women seriously. Okay. And, and although these women would not have called themselves feminists, the, the word was not in use then, the, the uh, women of the Daily Picayune were feminists because they were taking women seriously, seriously, their needs, and seeing them as human beings who could contribute and, and claiming that right and equal pay for equal work. Hey, <laughs> and we're going to be putting this show not only on the KDN Open Channel, but it will be on YouTube and it will be on Facebook. And if you would like any information, then you can always email. And her last name is pronounced... Beffer. Beffer. So it is Mickey Beffer, Beffer. and her email's up there, M-P-F-E-F-F-E-R-03 -E -E at gmail.com. And if you have questions you would like to ask, or even material that she might be interested in, who knows? Uh, you may have a relative in oh, your background. That would be wonderful. That, if someone you know, has a grandmother who went to the Cotton Centennial, what? that would be great. What? Well, we're now going to have to close out the show, but I one more thing. Thank you so much. I am so grateful. It, it took a while to get pleasure. you, but we are here. Thank I'll you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Acadiana, for tuning in to Louisiana Heartbeats. We're going to be closing out the show, but I encourage you that if you have a story to tell or if you're interested in something like we talked about today, we have had Mickey Pfeffer on our show, and she's talked about what it was like for women struggling. She's written a book about trying to be equal even in these timely topics of today. And the name of the book again is? Southern Ladies and Suffragists. And that is her book and she has actually gotten all kinds of letters and she's edited them out and she has placed a lot of this history material into her first book and she will be working on her second book which is going to be with uh, Caroline Merrick. It'll be the letters of Grace King. Grace King is the yes. second one. And, and then Caroline. Okay, so yeah. she's got a whole lot more to say. But until <laughs> until you see, check her out. And thank you so much for coming on the show also. Thank you. And the rolling credits are going to be starting in a few minutes. And as they come scrolling down, you can continue talking uh, if you have anything to say. But thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank and you. again, uh, we are on Cox Cable 15 and 16 and also on LUS Fiber 3 and 4. So, if you see something you like, give us a shout out and we'll try to get you more information. Until then, thank you for watching. You are so right. You, you do love to. I love, I, I love, love telling your stories. I love to talk. <laughs> You're very good at, at I'm interested drawing. in so many people. It's what, it's about you. And, I mean, I'm thinking, Lord, literally, all the people that sit at this table that have such wonderful stories to tell that have all this education, but it reminds me that my grandmother told me, well, you've got the gift of gab, yeah. so you can just talk to anybody. So. Yeah, my father used to tell me that, too. <laughs> you can talk to anybody. I love a good story inside of a story, you yes. know? Yes, so. But uh, we're really, uh, really happy to have AOC as our background here. Yeah so that we can showcase and it's such a blessing for people like you with clout people like you who have so much education willing to come on the show 
and share with everybody what's going on. What does AOC stand for? Kadiana Open Channel. Okay. It's multimedia community based. Okay.